Strike one called to Stevie Leva. In the batter's box is the Hawthorne Cougars visiting Lou House, taking on the Olympians, who have a record of one and six overall. And ball is in the dirt. It's two and one now to Leva, coming in batting 227. Looks down at his head coach at third base in the third base coaching box, Jeff Hines. J.C. Randolph is coaching at the first base box down at first base three and one now to Stevie Leva Leva with five hits in 22 at bats now squaring the bunt with a 3-1 count and looks high for a ball Eddie Gutierrez on the mound his time is called as his catcher Jason Nunez wants to have a chat with him and Eddie Gutierrez, one of the captains on this team, 5'7", senior, 180 pounds, has had a rough go of it so far this year, 0-2 oh and, and two starts and three appearances. And has six strikeouts and now 10 walks. Jonathan Juarez checks in and looks at a ball over his head. Jonathan, the shortstop for the Cougars. Batting 389. And that's in for a strike. Juarez tied for the lead and hits with the team at seven. He's tied with Sandoval. Leva is a threat to steal. Stevie Leva is three out of three in stolen bases. There goes Leva. The pitch is swung on and it's popped up on the infield in foul territory. Plenty of room for Francisco Hurtado. So back to first goes Leza. Leva on the pop, pop foul to Hurtado. So one down, and that'll bring up Drew Bonuelos. He is Mr. Everything to Jeff Hines and the Cougars, batting 300, has six hits and four RBI. Leading the way is Mike Henderson with six, actually seven, for Javi Martinez as Bonuelos squaring a bunt and Leva back. Mauricio Gonzalez over at first base, and Eddie Gutierrez thrown over there. So Banuelos squaring to bunt again. Looks at a strike, and Leva steals a base. So that's stolen base number four for Leva, and a strike. Now it's 0 and 2. Tom Fitzpatrick is the home plate umpire, and Michael Myers is the base umpire. And this is a line drive into left field for a base hit, picked up by Ortiz, throws it in quickly to the cutoff man, Sergio Hernandez, and that has uh, Leva holding at third base on the base hit to left field. The nice line drive. And that'll bring up Javier Martinez. So Javier Martinez leading the team in RBIs. With seven and has Leva out there at third base. But uh, Banuelos is garnering Gutierrez's attention. But with Leva over there at third base, he could have gone. So time is called as Nunez flashes some signs to the infield. Javier Martinez, a senior, looks at a curveball and that bends in for a strike. Back. 
And the throw gets away from Gonzalez. And trotting in to score is Laban. It's one to nothing on the error by Gutierrez. And down to second base goes Banuelos. So that's a tough play to keep the runner close with the, at first base and you have a speedy runner at the plate. So Martinez looks at a ball up. Here's the pitch to Martinez, a ground ball through into left field for a base hit. Rounding second and coming home is Bonuelos. And it's two to nothing Cougars on the RBI single by Javi Martinez. So that's RBI number eight for Javi. And Jason Nunez going out to talk to his pitcher. So let's uh, set up the infield for the Olympians. Francisco Hurtado at third base. Sergio Hernandez at short. Angel Vital over at second and Mauricio Gonzalez at first as Max Riley steps in, playing right field for the Cougars. Bunted at and missed for a foul ball, strike one. In the outfield, Steve Ortiz. Johnny Sanchez is in center field and Francisco Rubio is in right field. Behind the plate, Jason Nunez, and on the mound, senior Eddie Gutierrez, one of the captains of the Olympians. Martinez back at first base. We'll check on Javi's stolen base attempts. It's Gutierrez into the stretch, swing and a miss on a good fastball. It was looked like it was up, but still too tantalizing for Max to lay off. Javi doesn't have a stolen base attempt. Breaking ball and that's fouled back. And out of play, remains 0-2. So the Cougars coming in at 5-1-1. One, one. Since we saw them last, they've gone on a three-game win streak after that exciting 9-7 win over Lawndale. Losinger is 0-1. Foul ball, and that's Tomahawk foul. So the count's still 0-2 to Max Riley. This one's popped up on the infield again. Here comes Hurtado and, ooh, just out of the reach of Nunez. Toughest play in baseball for a catcher, especially when you have the overhang. The, the fence juts in at about a, uh, eh, I want to say about a 60-degree angle. So it's still 0-2 to Riley. Fouled again. This will be the seventh pitch. The Olympians are 1-4 at home. Meanwhile, the Cougars 
are 0-1-1 one one away from Hawthorne High School. Here comes the 0-2 curveball, and that's fouled away. Running out of room here on my balls and strikes. <laughs> So on deck is Jose Sandoval with one out and two runs in for the Cougars in the top of the first. And this one's off the fists and into left field for a base hit just over the outstretched hand of Hurtado. On the ninth pitch of the at bat. Martinez down at second, and that'll bring up Jose Sandoval, the catcher. Jose leading the team in hitting at 438, tied for the leads and hits with seven, all of them singles and five RBI. Nice save by Nunez. They can hear the wind coming off of the, onto the shore and just straight into us. And that aids the hitters here at Losinger High School. And this one is whacked into left field for a base hit. One hopped by Ortiz and everybody's gonna hold on a nice throw in by Steve Ortiz. So down to third base goes Martinez. Second base is Riley. And over at first is Jose Sandoval. Nunez is going to go back out there and talk to his pitcher. And I'm going to see if I can adjust this microphone real quick. Let's see if that makes any difference there. Yeah, how about that? And let's see. We have a substitution. Steve Ortiz is coming in, and Joel Perez or is coming into the dugout. Joel Perez is going to be playing left field now. So hopefully Tamara will find out why that happened. Hopefully Ortiz is okay. It was just a change. First pitch to Mike Henderson is a ball. So again, Perez in left field for Ortiz. It's two to nothing in favor of Hawthorne. Bases loaded and one out. outside. Two and one to Henderson. Bouncer to third, has the force out at home and that's gonna be it. So 2-5 on the fielder's choice. Moving up to third base is Max Riley. To second is Sandoval. And on at first is Mike Henderson with the fielder's choice. So the bases remain loaded for Charles Phelps. Into the gap in right center field. Coming underneath it is Francisco Rubio. And that does it fly out to right field and the Olympians get out of it cheap enough leaving the bases loaded for the Cougars. There we see the final out again. Can of corn for Francisco Rubio. We'll go to the bottom of the first.
Back at Lou House, where the Cougars have taken a two to nothing lead, and there you see warming up on the mound is Charles Phelps, just a freshman, throwing to Jose Sandoval. Phelps will be facing Johnny Sanchez, followed by Angel Vital, then Eddie Gutierrez, Sergio Hernandez. I believe it'll be Mauricio Gonzalez. Yes, Mauricio Gonzalez, Francisco Hurtado, Francisco Rubio, then Joel Perez, who took over for Steve Ortiz, and in the bottom of the order, Jason Nunez. First pitch from Charlie is in for a strike. So Johnny Sanchez coming up. Swings and misses at a slow breaking ball, and it's 0-2. Sanchez, two hits and two trips. High and outside. So it's one and two to Sanchez. So Johnny, a 5'8 senior, pops this one up into center field and Leva says, I have it, and puts it away for the first out. Now the wind is not a factor right now at losing her, but it blows from home plate directly down the third base line. And you can get a lot of wind blown home runs here. And that'll bring up Angel Batal, the second baseman. This one's popped up, Angel Batal. A little bit shorter and just outside the infield and Jonathan Juarez puts it away. So two down, that'll bring up Eddie Gutierrez, the pitcher. This is Eddie's seventh game. Has 10 hits in his 20 at bats. So he makes the most of them. So Charlie Phelps, without a record, this is his third appearance on the year and his first start in the dirt, it's 0-2. Has a 1.91 ERA, three strikeouts and a walk. And for a strike, he already has a nickname. His nickname is The Rock. Sails outside with a fastball. So it looks like Charlie has about, that was the fastball, maybe. It's the first time we've seen him too. But already has about two speeds that we've seen on the changeup. Fastball again, and that's just low. So that'll bring up Sergio Hernandez, the shortstop, and the cleanup hitter. So Phelps has pitched in seven and a third innings coming in as this one's fouled off by Sergio. This is Sergio's fifth game, batting 462, has six hits in 13 at bats and eight RBI. Has a double. Looping curveball lands in for a strike. So it's 0-2. Runner at first not being held on by Mike Henderson. And it remains 0-2 to Hernandez. Going over the infield for you. Drew Banuelos at third base for the Cougars. Jonathan Juarez at shortstop playing for a double play. 
Cesar Escavas. Swing and a miss, and down goes Hernandez in the high fastball, and we will introduce the Cougars next half inning. But in the meantime, one, two, three, actually no, one base runner put on via the walk, and that's it for the Olympians in their half of the first as we go to the second with the Cougars on top. Two to nothing, Hawthorne over the Olympians in the top of the second inning. Let's go to Egidio. Thank you, Lou. Well, the Hawthorne losing a rivalry started back at the Mayor's Cup in football a few months ago, and then it carried on into basketball. Hawthorne won the football meeting, losing got its revenge in basketball. Now the third time, the rubber match here on the diamond. Hawthorne leads 2-0. Losing her, though, looking for their second win at home. Only one other time they've won here. It's been a little bit of a rough season so far, looking to get bounced back here tonight against Crosstown rival who, uh, Hawthorne. Lou, back to you. Thanks, Egidio. Egidio DeLeo and one named Tamara from the LA Sentinel will be doing our dugout reports. First pitch from Gutierrez to Cesar Escavas is in for a strike. So Tamara covering the Cougars again this game. This one's hit high in the air to left field. Back goes Perez, still going back and makes the catch. So a nice try to home run is you, if you can get it up here, but the wind isn't blowing too hard yet. It's about a quarter to four as we talk to you right now on City TV. So about a half an hour that wind might start cranking up. That brings up the top of the order in Stevie Leva. And this one is stroked into left field for a base hit. First pitch, two pitches by Gutierrez and two swings at the bat. And got to feel sorry for Sergio Hernandez at shortstop. He was pinching towards second in the top of the first inning and everybody's hitting it to the hole. Now Stevie Leva hits it between Hernandez and the second base bag for a base hit. Can't buy a break. And there it is again right up the middle and that's a base hit. So they were trying out left field last inning, and now Johnny Sanchez gets a couple. So three pitches and three swings to the bat, and that'll bring up Drew Banuelos with two on and one out. This one's hit high in the air down the left field line. Back goes Perez, still going back. And that's a fair ball. Here comes Leva in to score. And being held up at third base is Jonathan Juarez. As both runners had to wait to see if that ball was going to be caught by Perez or not. And Juarez is now at third base on the RBI double by Drew Banuelos. So now Coach Greg Hancock is going out. And we're going to have a pitching change here. So we'll see what the changes are. So coming in to pitch is Angel Vital. So Vital was at second base, so Eddie Gutierrez just might switch positions. So top of the second with one out and two on. So Eddie Gutierrez is still responsible for Juarez and Banuelos. So 
So, yep, Gutierrez is now at second base. And Vital goes to the pitcher's mound. And the first man he'll face is Javi Martinez, who had an RBI single and was out two to five back in the first inning as he was on first. Actually, 5-2 is the put out. On the inside corner for a strike. So Martinez looks back at Tom Fitzpatrick. And so you sure that was on the? Well, you're standing right on the plate, man. And this one's whacked into center field and caught by Sanchez. Tagging and coming home with a slide is Jonathan Juarez. And that makes it four to nothing Cougars. So a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Javi Martinez. So Martinez with two RBI, and that gives him nine on the year. So Max Riley, who is one for one, almost wore out Gutierrez on nine pitches in his bat, all at 0-2, and, and a good curveball by Vital in for a strike. So Gutierrez goes one and a third innings. And we got to wait on the rest. Now it's 0 and 2 again to Riley. This one's in the dirt, and a good save by Nunez, but on the run anyway was Bonuelos with a stolen base. So now a runner at third for Riley. So Bonuelos, that's his fifth stolen bases, his fifth stolen base and six tries. So it remains 0-2 to Riley. And that one's up high. Two and two now to Riley. This one's over the head. That loads up the count. So two out, man at third for Angel Vital. It's three and two to Max Riley. Out of the stretch. Popped up. Perez coming hard, digging, and this called a fair ball. It might have glanced off of Perez, who was in fair territory. The ball was in foul territory, but at any rate, Coming in to score is Drew Bonuelos, and that makes the score five to nothing in favor of the Cougars on the RBI double, we're gonna call it, by Max Riley. So now we're gonna have some more changes in left field as Perez couldn't get it done out there either. So number 14 coming in. So Greg Hancock just finding somebody that can deal with the sun. And that's Antonio Mendez.
So that was the problem with Ortiz. He had trouble fighting the sun. Now Perez has trouble. Nice pitch by Vital in for a strike to Jose Sandoval, who had an arb uh, had a base hit back in the uh, first inning to left field. Out of the five base hits in the first inning, this one's fouled back. Let's check this again. One, two, three, four hits, excuse me. Four hits, all of them were to left field in the first inning. And down goes Jose Sandoval on the strikeout. And down go the Cougars, but they get three more runs on four more hits. And we go to the bottom of the second with the Cougars on top. Five nothing is our score going into the bottom of the second. Let's go to Tamara. So far, it's been all about the Cougars. Discipline at the plate has them off to a five and zero start. The first base coach told me when hard work collides, it usually leads to success, and that's exactly what we're seeing out here this afternoon. Lou, back to you. Thanks, Tamara. And foul ball up the left field line by Mauricio Gonzalez. Mauricio batting 400 coming in, has six hits and a 16 at bats. And none extra bases. Two RBI on the season so far for Mauricio. Charlie Phelps in his second inning of work. On a couple of hops, nicely picked up by Juarez to throw it across to Henderson. 6-3 and the put out. That'll bring up Francisco Hurtado, the third baseman. And Frank, batting 267, has four hits and six RBI and three doubles. And that leads the Olympians in that department. No home runs for the Olympians. Strike two pitch, and this is popped up. And going for it is Escavis. He puts it away for the second out. That'll bring up Francisco Rubio. The Olympians right fielder coming in. With no hits in his eight at bats. Bunts it, picked up by Phelps to put him away. 1-3 on the put out. And Phelps gets the Olympians 1-2-3. Top of the third inning. And the Cougars are sitting on top five to nothing. So Eddie Gutierrez went the first inning and a third through 25 pitches, gave up five runs on six hits and a walk, didn't strike out anybody. So Angel Vital will face Mike Henderson, Charles Phelps, and Cesar Escavas. Strike one to Henderson who grounded into a fielder's choice with the bases loaded back in the first inning. The big first baseman waiting on Vital. And it's one and one. We are right on top of home plate. The backstop is only about 15 feet away from home plate. Curve ball, and that's a beauty. One and two. 
Speaking of beauty, what a day it is today. The first full day of spring. Nice breeze. Hasn't turned into a gale yet. And did he hold up? Yes, he did. So it's two and two to Henderson. Big Mike coming in, batting 375 with six hits and six RBI. Also a score four runs. Now that loads the count, fills it up at three and two. Curve ball, hits the outside corner, strike three call. Mike may not have thought it was a strike, but that was a beauty. First strikeout for Vital in the Olympian pitching. Just missed that strike. And there's a strike to Charles Phelps. Phelps has not given up a hit to the Olympians, has only given up one walk. Phelps holds up. It's one and one. Just high. So it's two and one to Charlie. We're looking for his first win on the mound. So it's two and one. Has faced one batter over the minimum, seven Olympians. Curve ball and couldn't catch up to it. So it's one and two. Fifth game for Phelps. One hit and four at-bats. Also has an RBI. Just a freshman. And there's that nasty curveball. That's about an 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock curveball. No 5 o'clock shadow on that one. That's three strikeouts in a row for Vital. And that'll bring up Caesar Escavas, the second baseman. Caesar bunts it foul. So Vital getting very, very comfy out there. One and one. Yes, Angel tried to get Escavas to chase that one. Angel coming in with a 1.56 ERA and a one and one record. And this is his third appearance. Has a couple of starts and one complete game. And nine innings pitched. Bunts at it and missed. So it's one and two to Escavas with two out and nobody on for the Cougars. Also Vital is on the right side of the ledger as far as strikeouts to walks. His nine strikeouts coming in now has 12 and bounces this one on a hop to second base and throwing the dirt in, not in time. Now we're gonna give an infield hit to Cesar Escavis. So I wonder if we have that one racked up. Okay, so that was a nice run by Escavas, who doesn't give up on running it down. That's for sure. But a good play by 
Gutierrez, who's at second base. I believe that's Gutierrez at second. Maybe we can get Egidio to find out who indeed is at second base. I believe it's Eddie Gutierrez. Stevie Leva now up at bat is one for one with a walk and two runs scored. In for a strike. So Vital has a, a very sharp curveball. Pickoff throw for Escabas and a nice grab by Gonzalez over at first base. So two down, a man on. On the infield hit by Cesar Escabas. Taking a lead, and there it goes, and this is bounced up the middle and picked up. Well, it actually goes under the glove of Hernandez and Escavas hits third base. The ball goes into the Cougar dugout. And everybody will move up 90 feet. So speed is the weapon here in this inning. And that makes it six to nothing. Stevie Leva, we're gonna call that a base hit. And then a throwing error. I believe that was Johnny Sanchez. Do we have that replay? Okay, let's look at that. This one's bounced up the middle, just under the glove. And here comes Sanchez coming up throwing and just gets away. Actually, it was offline. So the error to Johnny Sanchez, and that allows the runner to score. So runner at third is Leva, and Jonathan Juarez looks at a strike. Johnny's one for one, had a base hit and scored back in the second inning. Pulled to third base, Hurtado over to Gonzalez for the third out. So 5-3 on the put out, down go the Cougars, but not before they get one more on two hits. Back at Lou House, where the Cougars keep chipping away and have a five to nothing lead. And they'll lead off with their left fielder. This is Antonio Mendez, I do believe. Let's just give one more final check to make sure. It's been a revolving door out there because of the sun. Antonio Mendez, a senior, looks at the first pitch for a ball. In the dirt, ball two, two and oh. Ground ball to second base. Nice hop for Escavas over to Henderson for the first out. 4-3 on the put out, and that brings up Jason Nunez, the catcher. So Mendez coming in. This is his fifth game. And one hit now in five at bats. And that brings up Jason Nunez, the catcher. Big Jake. has no hits in three official at bats. This is just his fourth game. Trying to get something going. 
Breaking ball didn't break enough to get into the strike zone by Phelps. And it's one and one. Jason, a 5'11 junior. So Greg Hancock, the head coach of these Olympians, is foul tipped at the plate, and that took a bite out of Jose Sandoval. It's one and two. So Greg Hancock, in his first year at Losinger High School, was over at Lawndale High School, and the whole crew got in the bus and came over here as far as coachy, coaches. Stu Swiggum is over at third base, and George Peck, Pesh, George Pesh is over at first base coaching. Also, Gary Rose, one of the assistant coaches. Nunez looking to get on. And a curveball swung on a miss. So that's strikeout number two for Phelps. And two down, that brings him to the top of the order, and Johnny Sanchez. Well, I don't think we uh, got quite done introducing the Cougars on defense, so why don't we do that again? We'll just start all over. Well, we're going to have to wait again. <laughs> this one's in the gap. And Stevie Leva with the too small of a hat on that mop of hair flying off and makes the grab out in left field and down go the Olympians one, two, three again. Nice running catch with Max Riley backing him up. Before we go to the top of the fourth inning, let's go to a Gideo. Thank you, Lou. Well, Coach Hancock already aggressive with this defense, making three changes to the left field position. He took Steven Ortiz out for Joel Perez, and then he took Perez out for Antonio Mendez. He's now playing the left field position. I asked Coach why so early with these changes. He said, hey, if you're not going to make the plays, I'm going to sub you out quickly. We don't want this uh, score to get out of hand so far. 6 nothing, losing your trails. Lou, back to you. And speaking of changes, Derek Adkins, a freshman, coming in to catch for the Olympians. So Adkins in for Nunez. As Coach Hancock trying to change the culture here for losing her baseball. It's not enough just to be able to come out here and put the uniform on the way it used to be. They, they had trouble just fielding a team. And the first pitch to Drew Banuelos is in for a strike. It'll be Banuelos, Martinez, and Riley to face Angel Vital coming in on relief of Eddie, Gar uh, Eddie Gutierrez, who is now at second base. One and one now to Banuelos, who is two for two with two runs scored and an RBI and a stolen base. Gee, would he be the tip of the hat or the POG so far? Probably the POG. This one bounces away from Adkins, and it's two and one. So Hancock was talking to us before the ball game, and in his seventh year of coaching baseball out of the LAPD. So thank him for his service, for serving and protecting us. And uh, you know, he just wants to make sure that he's got a good team and, and that these student athletes are responsible. Banuelos looks at ball three, three and one now to Drew. They not only have to get it done on the diamond, but also in the classroom. Bounce right back to Vital. One three on the put out to Mauricio Gonzalez, and that'll bring up Javi Martinez, who has two RBIs on the day. And a base hit back in the first inning. A base hit and a sacrifice fly for Javi. Hancock was telling us last year the Olympians weren't getting it done in that classroom. So out of 25 players, 13 failed to make the grade in the classroom. 
this year it's turned around. It's, it's been cut more in half. So already making a difference in the classroom. So Atkins goes out to talk to his pitcher, probably talking about signs. Derek getting a terrific opportunity to play catcher at the varsity level. But Derek is so small that I just noticed that his chest protector is cinched all the way and has a big tail hanging down on the, as this one's bounced to shortstop, picked up by Hernandez, the long throw across and a nice pick out of the dirt by Gonzalez, 6-3 on the putout. But if you can see Derek, he's probably got about a 23 inch waist. That uh, strap is hanging down. There's a lot of slack on there. <laughs> so Javi Martinez hearing it from the crowd. Andale. <laughs> As Max Riley steps in. <laughs> Max is having a good day. He is two for two with a double and an RBI. As he looks at strike one. That RBI double back in the second inning was hit high in the air down the left field line. And Joel Perez lost it in the sun, just couldn't catch up to it, and it dropped in. 0 oh 2 now to Riley. Now the Olympian dugout starts to come alive. Curveball stays up, 1 and 2. So Riley has a terrific eye at the plate. The first at bat was 0 and 2 and then fouled off seven more pitches before getting a base hit into left field. Now it's two and two as he evens the count after going 0 and 2. The RBI double was a 3-2 count. So Max will wait you out and wear you out. Swing and a miss, foul tipped in the glove of Adkin Adkins, and down go the Cougars and Max Riley. So a good job by Angel Vital and the Olympians to get the Cougars to go, go one, two, three for the first time today. Fashion tips by Tom Strickfadden coming up next on City TV. It'll be Angel Vital, Eddie Gutierrez, and Sergio Hurtado to face freshman Charlie Phelps. And this one's hit high in the air to center field. Stevie Lave emphatically says, I have it. And one pitch and one out. So Vital is 0 for 2. But more importantly, Angel Vital has pretty much put a cap on the Cougar D uh, offense, getting him 1, 2, 3 back in the fourth inning. Now you see Stevie Leva saying, that's all mine, fellas. Eddie Gutierrez looks at a fastball down low as Charlie Phelps looks at Tom Fitzpatrick. And says, are you sure? He says, yep. Again, Tom Fitzpatrick at home plate. Michael Myers, no he's not wearing a hockey mask, down the first baseline. And no, he didn't create Wayne's World either. This one's in the hole, nice stop by Banuelos, but that's gonna be an infield hit for Eddie Gutierrez, and that's the first hit of the day for the Olympians. So one out and a man on for Sergio Hernandez, who struck out swinging to end the first inning. Hernandez has six hits in 14 at bats. And he leads the Olympians with eight RBI. Also has the only double on the squad so far. 
And now, because of the runner over at first base, a big hole between second and first. Ball outside. So now the chess game begins. Actually, Stevie Leva is playing on the left field side of second base in center field. So that's even more real estate if Hernandez can get it into the gap into right center field. Also, over the head of Mike Henderson, who's not holding on Gutierrez, he is wide open as well. Swing and a miss on a changeup. I believe it's one and two. And this one's hit high in the air over third base, and Banuelos is all over the place. Catches that one. And Gutierrez has to go back to first base. So two down in the bottom of the fourth inning, and that'll bring up Mauricio Gonzalez. Mauricio batting 400, six hits and two RBI. Looks at a fastball low. Mauricio 0 for 1, grounded a shortstop to lead off the second inning. Everybody straight away, infield and outfield, over the glove of Phelps and into center field for a base hit. Leva picks it up and brings it in. But two out and two on now for the Olympians. So second hit of the day off of Phelps. And that'll bring up Francisco Hurtado. Francisco is 0 for 1, popped out to second base back in the second inning. On the corner for a strike. 0 and 1 to Hurtado. The third baseman has been very busy over there at one of the sun positions. Two out, two on. And that one's outside for a ball as Jose Sandoval goes out to talk to his pitcher now let's let's go over the the outfield the infield and the outfield Andrew Banuelos at third Jonathan Juarez at second Cesar Esquivas at second and Mike Henderson at first in the outfield it's Javi Martinez Stevie Leva and Maximilian Riley is out and right behind the plate Jose Sandoval Charlie Phelps, the rock, just a freshman on the mound. This one's bounced to Banuelos off of his chest, and everybody's going to be safe. And on the play, Juarez slid, and he gets up a little slow, fell a little bit awkwardly behind Banuelos, but he'll be okay. So now the bases are loaded with two outs on the infield hit. So that'll bring up Francisco Rubio, who bounced back to Phelps to end the second inning. But the Olympians trying to get something going here. Swing and a miss. Rubio looking for his first hit in nine at-bats. What a time this would be. Frankie playing right field for Greg Hancock. This one's bounced at the plate. And now it's 0-2 to Rubio. So Phelps one strike away from getting out of it. Meanwhile, the Olympians want to get back in it. Right down Hawthorne Boulevard. Strike three called. So that'll do it for the Olympians who leave the bases loaded. That close came the Olympians as Charlie Phelps gave up his first three hits of the ball game, but nothing else.
All right, back here at Lou House where we had some bookkeeping to go over. And Francisco Rubio is out of the ball game in right field. And Angel Vital pitches a curveball that stayed inside to Jose Sandoval, who steps in. It is one for two at a base hit in the first inning and struck out swinging to end the second inning. So number 13, Joe Curiel, a freshman, is in right field. Just inside again, 0-2. Or 2-0, oh, excuse me, 2-0. Oh. So Sandoval choking up on the bat. Fastball, low and away. So now it's 3-0. and oh. So again, at catcher, is Derek Adkins. And that's called a strike, and Sandoval's got to come back. So it's three and one now to Sandoval. Looks down at Jeff Hines. Trying to sell that last ball to Fitzpatrick, but he wasn't going. But now he's going to first base as he does get the bat back in time. So that's the first walk given up by Angel Vital. Came on with one out and two on in the, check that, three on in the second inning. No, that's right, there was two on. So we're going to get a pinch runner for Sandoval. And that's Jonathan Montoya. A junior outfielder. So top of the fifth inning, pinch running is John Montoya. So we'll check his numbers. See the method to Jeff Hines' madness. Montoya yet to have a stolen base attempt, but these Cougars are known for their running. As Mike Henderson steps in, 0 for 2, it was on on a fielder's choice in the first inning and struck out looking back in the third inning. Looks at that pitch for a ball. Batal. Looks over at Montoya, not taking a real big lead. Held on by Gonzalez, and look out. And that hit Henderson. Hit the uniform, didn't really hit the man, it appeared. So first walk and first hit batsman of the day for Vital. And that'll bring up Charles Phelps, who's 0 for 2, squares to bunt with two men on. And nobody out. Cougars looking to add to their six-run lead. The runners go. The pitch is high. The throw by Atkins down to third base. The tag is down. Out at third. Nice job by the freshman, Derek Atkins. And a good catch of the throw by Francisco Hurtado. So caught stealing 2-5. And that was Montoya, pinch running for Sandoval. And this one is going to fall short of Sanchez. And Henderson ends up at third base. 
on the bloop single by Charles Phelps. And for Phelps, that's his second hit. <clears throat> so that'll bring up the bottom of the order, and Cesar Escavas. He had an infield hit and came around to score back in the third inning. Beat out a ground ball, a high chopper to second base with a 1-2 count. As Batal was looking to take the Cougars 1-2-3, And time is called, Jeff Hines. Calling time now. And something's going on. We look like we're going to have another pinch runner. So coming out is Mike Henderson for the pinch runner. And coming in is number four. And we need to get Tamara to find out who number four is. The rosters that we have are based on their home uniforms, not the road uniforms. Meanwhile, Cesar Escavas waiting for the first pitch to him. Off-speed pitch, and that's inside for a ball. One out and two on. Would love to tell you if number four has any stolen base attempts, but all we know is that it's number four. Darryl At D Derek Atkins with a nice stop to keep the ball in front of him, and it's 2-0. and oh. Batal with runners at the corners. And that stays up. So now it's 3-0 and oh to escape us. Batal in his fourth inning of work came on with two on and one out in the top of the second yeah. inning. That one drops in for a strike, and it's three and one. He's been doing a good job. He's only given up a run on two, three hits, and it struck out four. This one's bounced and didn't know if that was going to go foul or not, but Adkins picked it up anyway. And coming across the score is Mike Henderson on the squeeze play, and Henderson makes it seven to nothing. <laughs> Down to second goes Phelps and an RBI for Escavas. That brings up the top of the order, and Stevie Levas. Hits it high down the line, right field line in foul territory, and neither Joe Curiel, now out in right field, or Mauricio Gonzalez could catch up with it. So number four is Cesar De La Luz out running at uh, second base now. One out there at first base. On on the fielder's choice is Leva. So here we get another look at it. 
Leva. Second to shortstop. But Leva is just too fast. Fielder's choice. And 4 6, Esqueva is out. So one run in, runners at the corners with two down for Jonathan Juarez. If anything, the Cougars are making Vital work. 0-1 oh to Juarez, who is one for three with a base hit to center field and a run scored. Runners are going, and the pitch is fouled back. It's 0-2 to Juarez. And that bounces off the one of the storage containers. Angel Vital against Jonathan Juarez. Runner is halfway down to first base, and that's Stevie Leva trying to bird dog Angel Vital. But Leva has to go back to first anyway on the foul ball. He was about 20 feet from the second base bag. There goes Leva again, and that one's fouled back again. Still remains 0-2 to Jonathan Juarez. So Charlie Phelps at third, Leva at first, and that pitch is just low. One and two now to Juarez. Leva, moonwalking between first and second, has about a 30-foot lead, now a 40-foot lead. There he goes, and Juarez fouls it off. Scrappy. That's the, what these Cougars are. And Jeff Hines keeps putting out a scrappy team every year. Max Riley with a 10 pitch at bat in the first inning. There goes Leva again, and this one is up high, and Leva has a stolen base. So it's two and two now to Juarez. Leva with his fourth stolen base. Actually, that's his fifth, as this one's hit high in the air to left field. Back goes Mendez. Actually, that's a base hit, and that's going to clear the bases. And look out. The ball gets away, and into second base is Juarez with a two-run single, we're going to call it. So Phelps comes in. And Leva comes in as well. So three runs in the inning, and that makes it nine to nothing. And that brings up Drew Banuelos, who is two for three, with an RBI, two runs scored, and a stolen base. And a couple of good plays on the infield. Ball one to Drew. Runner out at second base is Juarez. Hits it high in the air towards center field. Sanchez camping underneath it and puts it away. That's the final out of the inning, but seven men come to bat for Hawthorne and score four runs. Check that, three runs to make it nine to nothing. And there you see Sanchez handling that one on a light breezy afternoon in Lawndale.
bottom of the fifth inning. And Charlie Phelps comes in for his fifth inning of work. And Antonio Mendez looks at a ball low and outside. His first at bat. Then it'll be followed by Derek Atkins, the freshman catcher. Then it'll be the top of the order and Johnny Sanchez. Off speed pitch, and that stays away. 2 0. Oh. Mendez, in just his fifth game, has one hit and four at bats. Swings and misses at a breaking ball, and it's 2 and 1. So nine runs and 13 hits as Stu Swiggum runs by to get into the third base coaching box. No runs on three hits for the Olympians. Freshman Charlie Phelps doing a job. Henderson coming down the line in front of the Olympian dugout to put that one away. So that's a fearless job by Big Mike. And here comes Derek Adkins, the freshman catcher. Has one hit and seven at bats. This is just his fifth game of the year. Strike called. Derek doing a good job so far since taking over for Nunez. Even threw a runner out trying to steal a third. And that was the pinch runner, John Montoya. So not just anybody that he threw out. He made an accurate throw down there, too. Swings and misses. 0-2. So Derek, being a gamer out there, just a freshman, 1-2 and two is the count. Swings and misses at an off-speed pitch. And down goes Atkins. Fourth strikeout for Phelps, and that brings up Johnny Sanchez, who has two flyouts to center field. Three hits for the Olympians all coming in the fourth inning when they loaded the bases. But Frank Rubio struck out looking to end the inning. Here comes the 0-1 from Phelps. And that goes low. Angel Vital is on deck. Should Sanchez get on? Line drive over the head of the second baseman into right field. And Sanchez is too quick as Max Riley tried to throw him out. Because sometimes a guy will take his time getting to first base. But these Cougars are very well coached. They see a nice line drive just going with the pitch over Escavis' head. And Riley making it close with the throw to Mike Henderson with a nice stretch. So here comes Angel Batal, who's over for 2. Vital wanted to pull the trigger, but this one was high and tight. 1-0 to Angel. Not a lot of patience up there for Angel. He was two pitches and two flyouts. One over short and one out to center field. Cougars is straight away in the infield and the outfield with two down. This one's lined into the gap into left center field, and that one could go all the way to the wall. And jo Johnny Sanchez is going to be sent home, and the goose egg is broken. It's 9-1 to one in favor of the Cougars on the RBI double by Angel Vital. So for Vital, that's his 
seventh hit on the year and the fourth RBI. And that'll bring up Eddie Gutierrez. Bends in for a strike. So Phelps is bending but not breaking here late in the innings. The freshman doing a terrific job somehow. These guys just keep popping up at Hawthorne. There's another breaking ball. And this could drop and does. Just barely out of the reach of Leva on the pitch. Batal was going. And let's see if Leva's okay out there in left center field. He gets up and dusts himself off. As Vital comes in to score on the RBI single by Eddie Gutierrez. And let's watch this one. Here comes Leva, ju touched just off of his glove. That close to getting out of the inning. And coming up is Sergio Hernandez. So even though they're up at the time, Swing and a miss by Hernandez, 0-1. The Cougars were up by eight. Leva still upset with himself that he missed that ball in center field. That was a tough play. So for Vital, that's his seventh hit of the season and fourth RBI. But what about Eddie Gutierrez, Lou? Okay, he's the one who got the last hit. For Eddie Gutierrez, that's his 11th hit to lead the team and sixth RBI. That ties him up with Hurtado. Fast ball, and that bites off the corner for strike two. So Phelps. Still has a little bit of gas left in the tank. Looks over at the runner. This one's in the dirt. Trying to get Hernandez to go fishing, but wasn't having anything to do with it. These Olympians just have to practice a little bit of patience at the plate. Make Phelps work. And this one's whacked into right field and right into the glove of Max Riley, who had him played perfectly. So a line drive to right field, and that puts an end to the bottom of the fifth. But two runs for the Olympians as they break the goose egg. We go into the sixth. Before we go to the top of the sixth inning, let's go to Tamara. Hawthorne pitchers Charles Phelps got a little discombobulated in the bottom of the fifth, but, but Hawthorne is still in control, 10-2. We'll see how he comes out in the next inning. Thank you very much, Tamara. And I do believe we have a new pitcher for the Olympians. As Angel Vital was number four. And number 10 is out there now, Mauricio Gonzalez. Mauricio Gonzalez was the first baseman, so need to find out who is at first base now. And he'll face Javier Martinez's spot. And the first pitch from Gonzalez is a strike. One and one. So we have a replacement for the Cougars, a pinch hitter for Javi Martinez is Jeso Soriano. So two and one now to Soriano. Jesus slams this one into the gap, and that one splits Mendez and Sanchez. And Soriano hits the bag at second. Oop, look out, puts on the brakes, and now he's caught in a rundown. 
Down to third base and finally tagged out by the shortstop. So a double. And we'll call that six, five, six on the put out. As the throw came in to Hernandez and Gonzalez, his first pitch to Riley is a ball. So Gonzalez coming on on the top of the sixth inning, taking over for Angel Vital, who did a terrific job. So Gonzalez has been playing first base all day. And Riley making him pitch a strike. Max Riley, Mr. Patience out there, is two for, or one for three, I should say, with two hits and an RBI. Now it's three and one. Struck out swinging 10 the fourth inning. So for Gonzalez, this is his first time on the mound and gives up a walk. Third walk for Olympian pitchers, and that brings on Jose Sandoval. Jose is one for two with a walk. It's Jeff Hines giving the signals. And that one just grazed Sandoval. So down to first goes Sandoval. Over at second base goes Riley. And that'll bring up Mike Henderson. Top of the sixth inning just before league starts. Both coaches trying to figure out who's going to play where. This one's grounded up the middle. Right to Rodriguez for one on this first for a double play. So that ends the inning on the four, three double play. So a good job by the Olympians as that one was picked up by Gutierrez and he throws it over to the first baseman. Bottom of the sixth inning, it'll be Mauricio Gonzalez, then Francisco Hurtado, and Joe Curiel to face Charlie Phelps in his sixth inning of work. Swing and a miss. Gonzalez moved to first base, and Sergio Hernandez is now playing at first. Actually, yeah, Gonzalez moved from first to pitcher. Sergio Hernandez moved from short to first. And we're trying to find out who moved over to shortstop. Here comes the 0-1 from Phelps. Low, one and one. Ground ball, nice slow roller. Juarez over to Henderson. 6-3 on the put out, and that'll bring up Hurtado, who is one for two, had an infield hit back in the fourth inning. So nine runs on 14 hits as Charlie Phelps coming in to talk to Jose Sandoval. Two runs on six hits for the Olympians.
up high to Ortado. Here comes the 1-0, and that's outside. Is Phelps. Might be running on fumes right now. Now it's 3-0. and So taken all the way was Hurtado and looks at strike one. Now it's three and one. And that one's low, ball four. So a one out walk to the Olympians. And that'll bring up Curiel for the first at bat, for his first at bat. Since taking over for Frank Go Rubio, Francisco Rubio. So Angel Vital, who moved from pitcher to second base, was the one responsible and made that good play on the double play to end the top of the sixth inning. He's playing at second base now. Eddie Gutierrez, who started pitching, is now at shortstop. And Sergio Hernandez is moves from shortstop to first base. And this one is up high. So Eddie Gutierrez was the shortstop on the 6-5-6 six, six rundown of Soriano, and did they get him? Yes, they did, says umpire Mike Myers. So the pickoff, that's the first pickoff for Phelps. So it's picked off there, nicely done by Charles Phelps, the freshman. Joe Curiel waiting for the pitch, and that was on the corner for a strike. So it's two and one now to Curiel. Antonio Mendez. So I was looking at my scorecard and Tom Fitzpatrick giving a teaching moment to Charles Phelps. Something about getting off the rubber. So, so it's three and one now to Curiel. So two walks in the inning, and that brings up Antonio Mendez, who is 0 for 2, or at least that spot is 0 for 2. I believe this is the second at bat for Mendez. On the run, and no, out. That one, by the throw by Sandoval to Juarez bounced in the perfect spot to tag out Joe Curiel, who's caught stealing two to six. So that looked like Curiel was going to slide in there, but nope, Myers calls him out, and that does it for the Olympians in their half of the sixth inning. Nothing doing. They had two men on, but both of them, one was picked off, the other one caught stealing. Coming up to the top of the seventh inning, let's go to Egidio. 
Thanks, Lou. Edgar Gutier is one of the team captains for the Olympians who had the first hit for the Olympians uh, this afternoon. Also had a huge RBI single last inning. Interesting story about him. He was out of baseball for the last three years. He was working with his dad. Finally, this year, teammates convinced him to come on board and be an Olympian and play for this team since he's been hitting 500. So pretty smart move on his part. I'm pretty sure the Olympians and Coach Hancock are happy to have him as one of their teammates. Lou, back to you. Well, they sure are, Rigidio. That's a good story there it's uh, the family business you know that's uh, what you got to do you got to got to keep the bread literally coming in because his dad owns a bakery and so his dad once uh, he heard he was gonna had a chance to play baseball on the varsity team for losing your high school he says heck yeah first pitch to Charles Phelps is inside for a ball Charles is one for three with a base hit Back in the fifth inning. Struck out looking in the third inning and flew out to right field. 2-0 and oh now to Phelps. To Mauricio Gonzalez. Again, the infield has changed. Eddie Gutierrez, who Aguidio just talked about, is over at shortstop. Angel Vital is at second, and Sergio Hernandez is over at first. So it's 3-0 now to Phelps, who's done a terrific job giving up two runs on six hits. Has struck out four, walked three, and now is on base with the walk himself. Bottom of the order, and Cesar Escavas, who has really done a job at the plate. As a breaking ball, bends in for strike one to Cesar, who is two for three with an infield hit, came around and scored back in the third inning, and it had a bunt single and an RBI back in the fifth inning. Fouls this one off, and it's 0-2. So now Escavis with two RBI. Line drive and over at second base for one on the first and two speedy is Escavis on that soft liner. Four unassisted. Angel Vital doing a terrific job at second base and not on the fielder's choice at first is Escavas. So March 29th, the Cougars op gonna open up the Ocean League schedule with Centennial. Well, actually, that is a... Uh, Not a league game, but that's a tournament game. So they open up their season on uh, with Culver City on April 22nd. Swing and a miss. One and one now to Stevie Leva. Who's two for three with a walk. Two runs scored. Check that, three runs scored. Gave us with a nice lead, and there he goes, and the pitch is swung on and fouled. So it's one and two to Stevie. Escavas is one for one in stolen bases. There he goes again, They're grounded into the hole. And into left field as Hurtado was guarding the line and taking a base on Mendez out in left field is Escavas. And down to second goes Leva. And immediately, Mendez is replaced. That Got to give an error on him. 
So going out there, I believe, is number two. Jesse Black. The fourth left fielder. Now they're having to do some groundwork at third base. So all hands on deck. So Jesse Black will take over for Tony Mendez. Again, the fourth left fielder. This is in the top of the seventh. The Sun field is just unbearable out there, but this one was a ground ball, and there was no excuse not to get the ball back in in time. This one's hammered down the left field line, but fouled by Juarez. Jonathan is two for two with a run scored and an RBI. Had a base hit and a run scored in the second and an RBI single back in the fifth. Just missed the corner, and it's one and one. But over at third base is Escavis and Leva over at second, so the Cougars are threatening again. Nice slider, and that bends in for a strike. And you see Mauricio Gonzalez. And his first bit of work on the mound. This one's ground foul. Right to Drew Banuelos. Juarez can be patient as well. His last at bat in the fifth inning before he got his RBI single to left field. Here's the pitch with the infield drawn in. And that's nice stop dig by Adkins to keep it in front of him. But that might have been better off to let it go. It could have bounced right back to him. But anyway, it's two and two now to Juarez with one out and two on. Juarez with an eight pitch at bat back in the fifth inning. Now it's a full count. So with one out, the runners will be off. As a matter of fact, Stevie Leva is already talking to the shortstop, and this one's pulled foul again. So Leva, with the nerve of a burglar, standing right where Gutierrez is, and this one goes over the head of Juarez for a walk. That loads up the bases. That brings up Drew Banuelos, and he is two for four, with two runs scored, a stolen base, and a run batted in. And this one's grounded into left field for a base hit. Here comes Escavis to score. Leva rounds third and comes to score. And here comes the speedy Jonathan Juarez to clear the bases. Three runs are in, and it's 12 to 2 in favor of the Cougars on the three run double by Andrew Banuelos. So Banuelos really ringing the bell for the Cougars. Banuelos came into the game with four RBI, has just doubled that today. Now he has eight. That brings up Jesus Soriano looks at a strike. It's 
it's not that Gonzalez has been giving up the big hit, it's that the Cougars have just been placing the ball on the ground in the right spot, getting it by the defense. It's one and one. Two and one. The count to Soriano. Soriano came on as a pinch hitter for Javi Martinez. And Soriano had a double, but then tried to stretch that into a triple and got caught in a rundown. Now it's two and two. Now you have a pinch runner. Number 44. Huerta. Manny Huerta, a freshman, coming out to pinch run for Andrew Banuelos. This one's fouled back, and it remains two and two. So Manny Huerta comes on, and Huerta is a familiar name. So I wonder if he's got any siblings that have played sports. So J.C. Randolph questioning Tom Fitzpatrick, the home plate umpire, about a possible balk. But Jesus Soriano gets plunked. And he is on. So now two on. And only one out. This is Max Riley. Look out. And the life flashed in front of Jose Sandoval's eyes. He might have gotten a piece of him. I wonder if he wet his pants. Jeez, I almost did. Everybody has a good laugh. And it's 0-1. Strike two, a little bit high. But the Olympians could sure use an out. But instead it's hammered into the gap into left center field. Johnny Sanchez trying to catch up with it does. But by the time it gets back to the infield, in comes the runner from second, and that's Manny Huerta. And that makes it 13 to 2. Jesus Soriano is at second base, and Max Riley on base again with an RBI single to center. And Sanchez kicked it around a little bit, but it didn't make any difference on the scoreboard. As Huerta would have scored anyway. Jose Sandoval looks at strike one. This one's hammered foul. So for Max Riley, who came in batting 312, is improving on that now with his sixth RBI. I'll check that. That'll be his seventh. He has two RBIs today. Has three hits, a walk, and a strikeout. One and two the count now to Sandoval. Fitzpatrick warning 
players to stay behind the, the line there, especially after that wicked line drive by Max Riley. Sandoval pops this one foul. That's going to go out of play. Yeah, and Tom Fitzpatrick, the home plate umpire, asking for baseballs as the Cougars have been pulling everything foul. So two and one, the count to Sandoval. Well, it was a base hit, a strikeout, a walk, and hit by a pitch. And hit by a pitch again. Didn't really do a whole lot to get out of the way. So that is the third hit batsman by Gonzalez. He doesn't throw real hard, so that's why Cougars aren't really anxious to get out of the way. So this is the ninth batter, Mike Henderson, to come. And that one got a piece of everybody. And that is an RBI the hard way for Henderson who's been hit twice. So coming in to score is Soriano, who was hit by a pitch. Over to third is Riley, who got a base hit, and Sandoval to second base, who was hit by a pitch. Now the 10th man to come to bat. And now we're getting a pitching change. And also a new batter. Bradanovich is going to come in and bat. He will pinch hit for Charles Phelps. And look at that. We got a heck of a rivalry game going on here. How about that? Will Goodyear pass if I say Goodyear blimp? I doubt it. But always good to see them on hand. So Eric Berdanovich comes on to hit. Pinch hit for Charles Phelps. Team is going to have a little powwow out there. And let's see, number four is our new pitcher for the Olympians. And that's Francisco Hurtado. Hurtado comes on, top of the seventh. All right, here we go. With just one out. And the bases are loaded again for the Cougars. Second time the bases have been loaded. Bradanovich looks at strike one. Hurtado coming on. And Gonzalez may be over at third base now. Not too sure. One and one up high. So Bradanovich coming in batting 333. This is just his fourth game out of seven. Looks at ball two. Eric has one hit and one RBI, has a chance to fatten those numbers up with a base hit. Foul tips that into the glove. So we've had some changes for the Olympians out in the field, and we'll get to those right after this pitch. 
That one was just inside, two and two. Three and two, pardon me. So Sergio Hernandez is over first base. He's been there. This one is way up high. And it's not three and two. Should be two and two. Now it's three and two. And that is strike three call. So Berdanovic strikes out, and that's two down for Escavis, who is on on a fielder's choice, swings and misses at that one. Atkins gets that one right back. So Hernandez is now over at third base for the Olympians, and this one's pop foul to Gonzalez, who's back at first base and puts it away for the third out of the inning. But the Cougars bat around, as a matter of fact, they send up 11 batters and score one, two, three, four, five more times. And it's 14 to two. Bottom of the seventh, last call for the Olympians. And coming on, it'll be Jesse Black, Derek Atkins in the top of the order, Johnny Sanchez to face Eric Berdanovic, trying to close things out for Charles Phelps. And we also have a new catcher out there, Manny Huerta. Swing and a miss. Some heat by Berdanovic, 0-1. This is Black's first at bat. And a strike. 0-2 oh to Jesse Black. Jesse coming on, has one hit in seven at bats and two RBI. So now it's one and two to Black. 14 runs on 16 hits for the Cougars. Two runs on six hits for the Olympians. And did he go? Yes, he did. So first strikeout for Bradanovich, and that's five strikeouts for Cougar pitching. And here comes Derek Atkins, who swung out, or swung out, struck out swinging back in the fifth. Look out. So the Cougars looking for their fourth win in a row. And for the Olympians, they're just trying to find their way. But they have the right guy to do it, Greg Hancock. Let's see if Berdanovich has any pitching numbers. Here comes the 1-1 one, one to Adkins, and that fastball is up high. Berdanovic, this is his second appearance. No record, started that game, went one and two thirds, and this one's right down the middle. And it's two and two to Derek. But Eric didn't last long has an 8.4 ERA, and that one just misses. Check that, that was three and two, pardon me. So a one-out walk for Adkins, and that brings up the top of the order, and Johnny Sanchez, and should he get on, it'll be Angel Vital or Angel Vital's spot. Berdanovich gave up 
two runs on three hits. Walked a batter, struck out a batter, and gave up two doubles and faced ten batters. So strike one to Sanchez, and this one bounces away from Huerta. And down to second base goes Adkins on the wild pitch. So now it's one and one to Sanchez. So a good spot for Eric to get some work in, try to find the strike zone. And he does there. One and two. Hernandez is one for three. Had a single to right field and a walk. Or check that, and a run scored back in the uh, fifth inning. Swings and misses. And down goes Sanchez. Two strikeouts for Bradanovich. And that'll bring up Angel Vital. This one's fouled back to Vital, so it's 0-1. Angel was also one for three, had a uh, an RBI double. So Eric Berdanovich came in for Charles Phelps, Manny Huerta in at catcher, and Jose Sandoval is in for Andrew Banuelos. So here comes the 0-2, and that's grounded to shortstop. Picked up by Juarez and throws it on the first, and that's the ball game. 6-3 on the putout. And Charles Phelps is the winner. He is now 1-0 on the season. The loser is Eddie Gutierrez, and he goes to 0-3. And, and the final score, 14-2. 14 runs on 16 hits for the Olympians. Two runs on six hits for the Olympians. And both of these teams playing their hearts out, that's for sure. But this is a veteran Hawthorne club looking to do some damage in the Ocean League. And we'll be right back after we add up the numbers and get some postgame guests for you on City TV. Losinger falls to Hawthorne, 14 to two, and they are now one and seven. Meanwhile, the Cougars improve to six and one and one, and have a four-game winning streak. And Agidio has a guest. Thanks, Lou. I'm here with the Olympians manager, coach. Unfortunately, not the results you guys were looking for here tonight. You dropped to one and seven on this early on this young season. Uh, what are your thoughts on today's game? Uh, my thoughts are we played an excellent team, uh, Hawthorne. Um, always has an excellent team. Good pitching, good fielding, and good uh, hitting. Um, we're coming along. We're uh, making strides. We haven't found the right combination yet, but we're still uh, moving in the right direction. And I think a little more uh, effort on our guys' parts, a little more team effort, and uh, improve our hitting and uh, also our defense. And I think we'll be up there. Speaking of defense, a lot of defensive woes. You did a lot of adjustments throughout the game, start out early in the second inning. What was the strategy behind that? Uh, we got to put the right guys in the right positions. Uh, I hate to say it, but uh, the gentlemen on the bench are basically outfielders, mm -hmm. and I don't have any other infielders. Nobody wants to play the infield, and uh, we, we try our best to play the guys that can play, and the other guys, it's going to take them a year or two. Some of these guys have never played baseball before. Mm -hmm. They're like 10 years behind uh, other players from other schools. And Coach, what do you take? You have a game on Monday coming up, so not a lot of time for you uh, to get a practice. And what do you take from this game looking forward to Monday's game? Well, we got to have an effort. we got to have a complete effort, and we're not getting that. These guys seem to quit after the uh, third, fourth inning. And I, 
We don't want him to quit. We want him to play hard-nosed baseball. We want to play solid defense, timely hitting, great defense, again. And um, it, it's as simple as this. Catch and throw, see the ball, hit the ball. You the know, fundamentals. And, and basically the fundamentals. And also, we missed a lot of signs. Poor base running today, and we missed a lot of hit and run signs and bunting signs today. They either don't pay attention or they don't care. And so we're, we're dealing with that uh, I don't care attitude. And you got to play hard, seven innings. Uh, if we don't play hard seven innings, we're going to go five and we get mercy. Today we went uh, seven, but it and we lost 15 to two. You know, we gave up, uh, what was that, seven runs in the last inning. Unbelievable. I mean, it's not unbelievable, but <laughs> it's very much characteristic to our team. That's how, how we've been playing. We'll do our best uh, when we get a chance to practice here. Three games next week, mm -hmm. two days of practice, and we'll work on our weaknesses, try to build those into strengths. Coach, a tough loss. Thanks for your time. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lou, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Gideo. And just looking to see if Tamara has a guest. And uh, yes, she does. And when she is ready, let me know. But uh, 14 runs on 17 hits I have for the Hawthorne Cougars and two runs on six hits for the Olympians. And Charles Phelps was a, had a whale of a ball game, went six innings, gave up two runs on six hits, struck out four, and walked three. And now let's go to Tamara. Coach, 14 runs. Where in the world did your team get all that energy from? I'm trying to find out myself. It got me tired after all those runs. What's been, the, what's been the key to a six and one start? Well, I, I think hard work, preparation, and the kids' coachability. They're very, very coachable. So when you have that combination, it's kind of easy to push them along. Can you talk about the mental toughness of this team? That's what we preach, mental toughness. We want to get our kids to the point where if we're in the last inning, we have two outs, there's a glimmer of hope. We don't want our heads to bow after three innings and we're losing. We don't want that. We want to teach mental toughness. All right, Coach. Thanks, and congratulations on the win. Thank you. You're welcome. You. Lou, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Tamara. And now it's time for our player of the game. Our player of the game, I would say, is Charles Phelps because he really did a great job. The freshman pitcher, Charles Phelps, gave up two runs on six hits and pitched six innings, 74 pitches, struck out four and walked two. So Charles Phelps is our City TV player of the game. And for our tip of the hat, well, let's see here. I'm going to go with Eddie Gutierrez, who started off. And Eddie Gutierrez, uh, although didn't fare so well, went one and a third innings on the mound starting things off, gave up five runs on six hits and walked a batter in 25 pitches. and But at the plate, it was, but you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my mind. Can I change my mind here? Okay. Angel Batal is going to be my tip of the hat. Eddie Gutierrez did a good job at the plate, had two hits and an RBI, but it was Angel Vital coming in on the mound. And he came in the, in the top of the second and with a one out. So let's see, he went three and two-thirds innings and pitched terrific ball and, and uh, gave up a couple of runs. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Gave up four runs, I believe. Or three runs, excuse me. Gave up three runs. Just doing this all on the fly, so I apologize. But had four strikeouts and a walk and then ran out of gas going into the bottom part of the sixth inning. And then at the plate, Angel had a uh, two-run double back in the fifth inning. So Angel Vital is our tip of the hat player of the game. So congratulations to both the Hawthorne Cougars who win 14-2 and improved to six and one and one, and also with a four game winning streak, also to Losinger. I mean, uh, they're trying to get what to those coaches over there, Greg Hancock in particular, uh, the gentleman that is holding his hands behind his back to the right, but that's Stu Swiggum, the good uh, baseball teacher, longtime baseball coach, who's showing these kids how it's done. 
Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to City TV. And I want to thank Tamara and Agidio and the City TV crew led by the three-time Star Award winning Tom Strickfadden. So uh, from Losinger High School at Lou House, it is the Hawthorne Cougars 14-2 over the Losinger Olympians. Until next time, so long.